In this episode, we're going to be looking at England versus Ireland. The teams are out and we're going to be looking at all the selection decisions and who we think will win and why. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me again today. There he is. Hello, Elko. Hello, TT. How are you? Um, very much looking forward to this um, big one at Twickers. It's going to be... I'm very nervous. Very, very nervous. <laughs> OK, before we jump into the selections themselves, what do you think about the game overall? There's been so much press about this game. So many people talking about this, that, the other, unrest in the England camp, Ireland can't be beaten, all this kind of stuff. But what are your overall sort of thoughts? Uh, well, not particularly happy with Jamie Heaslip this week. He's he's pretty much. <laughs> I I heard it was like you. For those that didn't hear, um, the 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 legend that is uh, Mr. Heaslip. Not um, he said that basically the only way England were going to win is if, <laughs> if Ireland went down to fourteen or thirteen men. <laughs> it's like what? What are you talking about? Absolute. <laughs> numpty no um it's it's this is, is going to be the biggest challenge for Ireland there's, there's no doubt about it um I, I think it would be I, I, don't, I don't particularly like the the super confidence uh bordering on a little bit arrogance um from some from some um, I, th I think we we Ireland needs to be you know definitely going in as favorites and not apologizing for that and you know we've earned the right to be favorites but I think um if there was a different coaching team or different, you know, different culture within the Irish camp, then that could that could derail them. Um, but I think with with Faz there and being being an English guy, he knows what's coming. Um, and when we get into the selection, it's the, England look extremely dangerous. Um, and if Ireland aren't on us, um, and and don't, uh, you know, take their chances and opportunities when they come up. You know, like, like we spoke about against Wales, where they missed quite a few in the first half, although I don't see them playing that way. Um, they could be in trouble. Um, they, England have got some some belters in in the team, so let's see what happens. I might be there, TBC, TBC. <laughs> OK, interesting. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I say quite often, and I'm going to repeat it again now, things are never as good as they seem when, when things are going well for you and things are never as bad as they seem when things are, are not going as well. It only takes a tiny little bit to swap things around. So with that in mind, let's get into the selection of England and the forwards to start off with. As expected by pretty much everybody, George Martin gets a start in the number five jersey with Chesson moving to six and Roots moving out of the team altogether. Uh Gendron Cole starting again as the props. There was some discussion around that whether England should start with their two strongest scrubbages. Uh, but this is what they've gone with. What do you what do you make of it, mate? Yeah, I, I like it. It's um, I like the back row. Uh, I like Chesham there. Uh, you, you pretty much call all of this in your in your in your uh, sort of pre selection, um, looking at what they might do and. You know they're interchangeable, Martin and Chesham. Um, Martin's Martin's class. Uh, it, it feels like a really good foil for for the Ireland team. It seems very balanced and clearly selected to try and nullify what Ireland um, have in their pack. Yeah, I love the balance of this team. I think it looks uh, it looks very strong. Martin obviously is a beast. Um, and did amazingly well against South Africa, as everyone knows, in the World Cup. And we just felt like this was going to be his championship to sort of cement that place. That's been put on hold due to injury. But I sense he is going to be fired up to make a huge impression on Saturday. OK, into the backs. And uh, Mitchell comes back in for Danny Kerr. Fit again, Alex Mitchell. The big news, though, Faya Wabosu gets his first start for England on the right wing. Tommy Freeman moving over to the left. Everybody else stays the same. What are you making of this, Elka? Wow, it's a big old selection, isn't it? Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm almost as confused with this selection as I was with the Scottish game. Um, you know, we spoke about it. 
does this selection mean they're going to change the way they play? No, they're not. They're not going to change the way they play. They're going to. It's going to be a kick fest, box kicking, um, sniping from Mitchell forward to control us, um, and then trying to you know this bring in this rush defence, try and put Ireland off their play, and then hit them with turnovers. Um, I, th- I think is what we're we're, we're going to see. Um, and probably some good set play stuff as well, like they did in the in the first bit, uh, first five ten minutes against Scotland. You know, if they can then go on and not make the mistakes that they did, I think it's very unlikely that that um, twelve thirteen um, will 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 be as poor as they were against um, Scotland in attack with those weird errors. I just don't see it happening again. They're too good. They're too good individually to to have those that kind of game again. And um, forecast is looking okay, maybe a bit of drizzle, um, but should be nice a nice day at Twickenham. Um, but th- this this is a very dangerous backline. Um, if um, if someone else was coaching it, I'd be like, oh wow! But they're not going to chuck the ball around. I just don't, I just can't see them. Um, I think it would be suicide to do so as well. well. Um, but it, it it has the potential, um, m- much like we we've um, we, we spoke about. Um, after the Scotland game, around you know how lethal Scotland were. Like th- this, they've got some finishers here that could really cause problems for Ireland. That could take chances. You only need three chances, and as we saw with with um, Scotland, and you could be you know fifteen, twenty one points um, out of reach. You know, so it's it's a for me as an Irish guy looking at this, it's um, it's it's got a lot of potential to cause uh, a lot of problems. Yeah, I thought that England might go a little bit more conservative this week. I thought they might play a little bit less in the middle third. But the selection of Feo Wabosu makes me think that maybe they won't. They've sort of been more... They've tried to play more this championship, for sure. They definitely have. It hasn't worked, obviously, a lot of the time with, with errors and stuff. I think they might just be going on the same blueprint, the same game plan that they've had, you know, broadly the same game plan of the previous games. And I think they might try and go after Ireland based on this. So it's um, it could be made up, you know, it could be lining up for a very interesting game in that respect. On to the bench. Well, oh, go on, go on, mate. No, I was just going to say, you know, the, the fact that, that he's dropped daily, you know, for, for and brought this kid in, you know, what does that tell you about the mindset? Because I would have thought he, you know, it just it just bamboozles me every week that, you know, he, would he not be thinking about, you know, having Daly on the pitch so he can kick three, six, nine, getting ahead, putting Ireland under the scoreboard pressure? That's, this selection doesn't say that. This selection says we're coming for you, um, um, you know, in both attack and defence, which, you know, they bloody should be. It's, it's tricking them. You know how they must be sick as parrots that Ireland are favourites. You know how how many times have we, as Irish men, been able to say, "Yeah, Irish sport is going to we're favourites." It's, it's weird, very odd. I don't like us. Yeah, I mean, and also not just favourites, heavy favourites as well. Uh, the odds, you know, the the gaps come in a little bit over the last week, but still very heavy favourites. More than one score, I think, with the bookies at the moment. Let's look at the bench. Yeah. Uh, front rowers, the same as before. Now, the interesting one is Dombrant's come in uh, ahead of Roots, essentially. And I said in my sort of selection preview or prediction video that this 19 through 22 looks very quinzy. And if you're looking uh, for players that want to come on when you're potentially losing the game to turn it and have the confidence to go and create scores, then you want players that play for Harlequins. And there's four of them now where I thought it might only be three. So, I mean, Danny Care to come on and orchestrate things on his 100th cap, score the winning try. That's what I'm saying is going to happen, Elka. <laughs> you, could, you, could well be, you could well be right. You could well be right. Uh, <laughs> I, it, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. If I was to look at it negatively, <laughs> which I'm going to, I would say it's a it's a weird one because uh, whereas whereas I could see the, the the selection certainly in the pack is a foil for Ireland, I don't see this as a foil for Ireland. I see this as like you, you, we'll get on get onto the Irish selection in a second, but you know, for me, it's almost like looking at a Quincy versus Leinster, and uh, you know. I see Leinster winning that battle, you know, with the power that they have all day. Um, so 
But yeah, if, if you know, if you were talking about a team that maybe tires in the last 30, 20 minutes, that's not Ireland. Ireland, we, we've we've lost that tag. We, you just don't see us doing that. We the, the the fitness levels are huge, so maybe the game will be really open. Um, if any team is going to be tired, I would think it's England. Um, with the defensive system they have. Um, you know, I think that they'll be the ones that potentially will be will be struggling towards the last twenty ten minutes. But look, that you know, we're massive fans of coming out. It's a big selection to bring Don Brandt in. Again, it just it 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 kind of screams Quinns barbarians. We're going to run everything. Um, maybe he maybe Borthwick's been you know there's been stuff around. I think we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago around, is he reacting to what the press are saying? Because it kind of feels like this is the team that maybe the, maybe he's reacting to what the fans want. Um, but there's no point picking a load of awesome players if they're going to be playing stat ball. You know, they've, they've got to, they've got to play something uh, exciting, but you know, these, the qu- great thing about the Queens boys is they do come off script and they do it really well and have done for the last few seasons. Um, and you know some great players there. Um, obviously Smith, um, who I'm a massive fan of. And then you've got maybe it's maybe it's not get Danny Kerr to score on his hundred. Maybe it's Daly to come on and kick a uh, I don't know a, a, what sixty meter kick um, penalty to win it by a point. Who knows? Who knows? Lots of ways this could go. That's for sure. Let's go and look at Ireland now. And honestly. The selection of the Ireland team is almost getting boring now, isn't it? Like, it's just so predictable what Ireland's best team is, who they're going to go with in the big games. Like, it's a great place to be in for Ireland. The pack of forwards is exactly the same as went out last time. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Um, again, you know, you got to compare it to, to some of the great New Zealand teams. You just knew every, you know, what their back row was going to be all the time and it just allows supporters to get into it. it. Allows the kids to get into it. It's just cool. It's, it's you know we're in a really really great place. And the problem with that is, you know, particularly the likes of McCarthy. He's got a big target on his back, massive target. Martin and Otoji are going to be all over him, um, both in terms of loose play, um, in terms of when he's running with the ball and and, and in the lineouts as well. So, you know, but. You know, it's time to you know, let's see let's see how, how good he is how good the young kid is um but uh yeah it's such a great place to be in that we we have such consistency of selection and it means that as units they're very very good scrum i think is going to be a massive issue do we know who's refing yet no no um you know you got you got coley who is uh being around the block very wily character again i think they'll they would have they would have pointed out Porter and you know what what's been going on with him, what he's got away with allegedly. Um, I think you'll see him, uh, Cole just coming in and and England looking for for trying to get Porter on the angle. So, um, but yeah, that, look, that, that's it's a really well balanced team. Um, Omani in there gives me loads of confidence as an Irish supporter that he he has been in situations where you know teams he's been in have been favourites and they've rocked up and just thought it will happen. I don't see us doing that. I think I think they'll have to perform at a at a nine nine out of ten minimum um as a pack to get a win in Twickenham. So um yeah re- really good selection and, and delighted as an Irish fan that we we have such consistency. Yeah. I want to dig a little bit deeper on the propping stuff obviously as a former prop myself. Dan Cole's got a pretty strong reputation for trying to stray stay straight and square, which um, you know, might then show Porter at more of an angle if that is the case. You're, not always, obviously, but he does try and do it for sure. And then on the other side of the scrum, one of Genji's best ever scrummaging performances for England was against Ireland and against Furlong. So I wonder if that was in the back of England's selection minds when they decided who was going to start and who was going to finish. Mm. Uh, because I think Joe Marler's technical excellence against the lower height of Finlay Bealham might also be the best matchup for England as well. So I wonder whether that was thought about in the selection. I mean, I'm sure it was. Um, okay, let's go into yeah. the backs for Ireland. And the big news here, Hugo, Hugo Keenan back fit again and selected at 15, which, of course, I think everybody agrees. If he was fit, then he has to play. 
ah, no brainer. No brainer. What a, what a, what a, and again, it's, it's I just like the way Farrell thinks, you know, it, it, this is a, it will inspire the rest of the team. Um, I believe he's been, Keenan's been, you know, working so hard in his rehab to get back. And um, I just, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a really good feel factor for the rest of the squad to see him coming back. Uh, it's a crucial game for us. Um, and yeah, it, it, it makes some of the other, um, selections which we'll get onto on the bench really really interesting but uh and again you know you look at that team and it's just picks itself doesn't it um it's it's just again consistency and and you know where this is the other thing i suppose we should have said about england it's like he's changing stuff again you know both it's 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 i, I just don't know how you can expect teams to create units and combinations particularly with new systems when you're chopping and changing all the time um and and farrell has got this squad in a place where it's just so consistent you know um it's 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 great to see yeah i mean to defend borthwick a little bit it's only three changes in the starting team one of which is mitchell coming back in who was the first choice um player anyway and then the other two are one, George Martin, who's coming back to fitness, having had one game on the bench, and Feo Waboso, who's a young, phenomenal talent who's been given time to develop off the bench himself. So I don't think it's a huge amount of changes this week in particular. And in fact, Borthwick has today, I think, sort of quoted as saying, you know, consistency of selection is really, really important to him. So yes, there are some, but I can I can see I can see why in the in these cases for sure. Mm. Okay. Yeah, tell, 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 the young, tell the young 12 from Saints that. <laughs> Onto the, Where is he? <laughs> Onto the bench for Ireland. And it's pretty much, well, actually, there's a few choices to be made here. One of which is whether you go 6-2 or 5-3. Um, because some big players miss out in that case. Gary Ringrose, fit again, but doesn't make the 23. Due to circumstances, that's the way sort of Andy Farrell described it. And apparently Gary Ringrose was kind of laughing when, when he sort of said it to him. He went, I know I've benefited from circumstances in the past and it's just the way it is. The other big one is James Ryan out injured with a bicep injury in training. But no worries for Ireland. They'll just throw another British Lions second row in there. British, British and Irish Lions. Um <laughs> Imagine me correcting you after all the abuse I've got. No, Henderson is definitely a British line. Um, yeah, you know, listen, good to see an Ulster boy in again. We've we spoke about this before. Um, you can rely on, on Henderson. I think he's you know he's he's a very experienced guy, and I think he he knows the line, line outs inside out. If he if he needs to if he needs to call, yeah. Look for me, six two was always going to be the call against England. I think they, they need to be very direct and, and do what they do, um, particularly with Felix Jones in the, in the team. I think they've got to go after him. Um, it's worked before when, when um, he was at South Africa. Um, and it just shows confidence in our squad and the way we want to play. Um, we're not worried about England it, it, you know, in terms of internally in the camp. Um, they're concentrating on what they want to do. And what they want to do is, is a power game and, and come on and smash them. In that case, then... I think it, it makes sense. Um, I think if you, as well, like I know Ring Rose is fit, but it's always a little bit sketchy when you're bringing someone in. And he hasn't played in ages, to be fair. He, he got injured playing for against Le- Leicester um, ages ago, so it, I think it could have been it could have it could have been a big risk. And um, Foley did really well last week, so we know he he can cover across the board there in the back line, and you've got Murray then to, if needs be, can can come and play. Um, and 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 place kick as well. So, um, and you look, you look at that that sort of um, six forwards looks really good. My only concern, and you you brought it up um, just a minute ago, is Beelham, um and Marler, and and that could be, yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm not I'm not 100 sure on that one. Um, although he, he Beelham played played really well against England the last time out. So, but it looks it. Otherwise, it looks really good, and if Bard can 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 Bard can can continue his form that he showed against Wales, yeah, he's an he's an absolute specimen, right? If he, if he can just finish off some of these breaks, uh, in you know, um, as as England tire, and I think I think you'll see some line breaks. Um, I really do, um, and and it will be interesting whether England are you know. Uh, it's a high risk defence, and I think it will pay dividends eventually, and it might do on on Saturday. 
but you will you will get line breaks. Um, uh, I, I think I think our ten can unpick that. Um, I think you'll see a lot of rainbow passes. Um, I believe they've. I think um, Brett Igo put some put stuff the other week. Around, you know, their warm up drills was all, all rainbow passes. Maybe that's a rope or dope, and um, they're doing that on purpose. And actually, probably where, where Ireland will attack in England is is actually quite, quite close. And I think probably the the ten channel. Um, that's where I'd attack. I'd be all over forward trying to just. If, if you want to play that rush defence, then. Fine, we're going to go for your weakest link, and I think probably Ford is the the, the smaller guy there. So, yeah, it's it's um, I, I like again, it's consistency of selection, and and it it looks it looks good. It's yeah, really good. just on the Ford thing, I mean, he it, he does complete the vast majority of his tackles. It's just that they tend to be behind the gain line, and of course, with Ireland being a momentum yeah. team, and just once they get on that front foot, it's very very difficult then to stop them getting momentum after that. That will be the challenge of this defence because I think you're right. I think they will definitely try and get on the front foot through Ford's channel and then, you know, play sort of expansively from there. Yeah, I think we we um, sort of identified some of the play against Wales in the first half. There was some, there was these new weird wraparounds that I, I think is built for for a rush defence. <clears throat> so I think I think we'll see that. Um, you know, and also. Uh, on another pod, uh, someone was saying this week, and I, and I can't remember which one it was, but uh, completely agree. I think you'll you'll uh, what, what England will want is for Ireland to kind of fold and keep going the same way. I think what you'll see is then maybe set up rooks in the middle of the field and make England uh, uh, in a new system have to number up and think. Oh, hang on, they're not just coming around and manning up. There's there's two distributors on left and right. Where do I go? And then Ireland looking, to, you know, Gibson Park looking to see where the numbers are, or Keenan Chetner from the back because he, he'll be able to see it. And um, you know, I think we'll see it, see a lot of sort of interesting play around. How do you, how do we break down this this rush defence? Yeah, absolutely. Some of the key matchups, I think that I've already spoken about the props. I think that will be key. Um, also, the other matchup, which I think is fascinating, is going to be Feo Waboso against James Lowe. Two powerful, fast wingers, and Lowe's defence has, has come on leaps and bounds in recent seasons as well. So it's going to be, you know, a great challenge for him up against the debutant, starting debutant, I should say. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's crazy, really. I mean, what was it a year and a half ago? He was playing for Taunton. Taunton t- <laughs> last year, I think. Mate, last year, I mean, uh, you know, it's a huge test for the kids. I mean, I if I was, I, I'd be targeting him hundred percent. I'd be putting balls on him. Let, let's, you know, let, let's see if he is the real deal. Um, the, I guess I wouldn't say they've got a lot of analysis on him. Um, so they'll have to kick well. <laughs> Don't kick loosely because clearly he can, he can make breaks. But yeah, that's that's a great matchup. The two of them. Uh, you know, you've got a <clears throat> an older statesman, almost a really experienced guy, and though. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then this young kid from nowhere, um, you know, it, it's who who will who will win that one? Interesting. Mm, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see whether Ireland <clears throat> actually do go for him or not, because a lot of Ireland's sort of DNA is playing lots of phase players, keeping the ball through long periods. So whether they do sort of change that up and sort of come up with some kind of specific kicking strategy to really target him. Which you know they have done on previous uh, previous games. They, you know they've brought in very specific ideas for specific players. So it'll be fascinating to see whether that happens on Saturday. Yeah, particularly because I think one of the reasons they picked him is because of Exeter's defence, and it's quite similar in terms of and, and and they need wingers to be bossing up because of the way they, you know, it, it's up and in. Um, so so those guys need to be kind of almost screaming inside to, to really get the guys to come up and, and, and with speed sort of thing um, and I guess then that means that yeah you're right like Ireland might have some design plays that you know to keep him turning and then if he's he's off the boil then does that affect the rest of the guys inside potentially but if they if they get it wrong danger time very much so um, I you know everybody's saying Ireland are going to win and of course I also agree that they're Strong favourites, but if England do win this game, Alco, how would how will they have done it? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I lost you. Um, well, who's beaten Ireland in the last 
12 months. New Zealand? Yeah, and how did they do it? You know, they played. They played, um, much like Ireland do, short passes, um, you know, um, keeping the ball alive, continuity. Um, so, yeah. do, can't, that's, but that's the New Zealand team that's, you know, was together and has unbelievable coaching staff, uh, has attack as a kind of brand, you know, can, can England just flick a switch and do that? I don't, I, I don't know. So I don't think they're going to do it that way. I think they're going to do it in a Leicester style, pragmatic, um, try and keep the ball. I think they're going to go at Ireland, particularly in line outs. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's still a worry in Ireland about the line out because although our stats are incredibly high in this competition, I think it's fair to say that most teams haven't bothered kind of competing with us. There's no way that Borthwick is, is going to let that fly. You know, that, that's his baby within the coaching staff. Um, and I don't get Toji will, will either, as, as I think he's captain of the line. So, and then you've got Chisholm and Martin who know how Borthwick wants to, wants to play and how to run the line out. So I think they'll really go after them in, at line outs. At line outs. Um, so you might see actually England kicking a lot out um, and, and challenging Ireland um, and then getting in turnovers, uh, taking the chances. So I, th- I think it will be a, a pragmatic style. And then, you, you, listen, you're right, TT, with the bench they have, then actually then does it does it open up and, you know, um, the, the stadium's going crazy and there's uh, incredible cross-field kicks and um, miss passes and loops and hitch kicks and all sorts of stuff going on. Um Maybe, maybe, um, but uh, it's it's hard for me to to, to to it's it's a really difficult one. Um, I don't know if you listen to Horgan on on. Uh, uh, he, he's I love Shaggy. He's such a really lovely to listen to. He's, but it it is really weird as as an Irishman to my my psyche is I don't want to be a favourite. I just don't I don't like it. I just don't it doesn't suit how I want to be. I want to be the underdog. Um um but I'm sure English people don't feel the same way. They don't want to be they want to be the favourites. <laughs> you come to Twickenham. So it's a real crazy weird thing. And as I said, I don't think it's been arrogant um thinking that we're gonna we're gonna um turn up and do a job. Um but it's a huge, it's a big, it will be the biggest challenge. I've got no doubt that it will be the hardest game because England ain't going to run up, like, roll over and let, let Ireland tickle their belly. 100%. And I agree. I think England, if they do win, they're going to have to get into Ireland at source and then just continue that pressure over and over and over again. And they're going to have to be absolutely at it for the full 80 minutes to get a result uh, on Saturday. They can. I strongly believe they can, but they're not the favourites. And I think that's that's absolutely rightly so. And it's definitely not arrogant for Ireland to think that they should go there and win. I believe they should think that as well. That's the confidence that their performance is over two and a half, three years now, 100% warrants. So, Elko, money time. Where's it? Uh, who's going to win? I think we know that, but by how much? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, 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 Ireland by forty-five. I was, I was thinking. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> arrogant, the arrogant Irish. Uh, uh, so no, I, I think Ireland will win, um, and I think Ireland will win plus seven, but they won't get a bonus point for scoring four tries. Interesting. <clears throat> I also think Ireland will win. I think they'll they'll have too much. They'll have enough quality they'll have enough phases in the game where England can't contain them that they'll win and I also think it will be relatively comfortable I think it will be 23 31 on the scoreboard but it'll be it'll be tight for a long time I think yeah and one thing so we we we, we didn't discuss um and it has been a theme I guess in other in other sort of um podcasting stuff is 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 the Twickenham effect and I think I think it will pay play a huge part in the game on Saturday, and I mean that in both ways, um, because I think if if England play well, and this team does play some good stuff, I think the crowd will get behind them and it will be incredible. But if they pitch up, and I've been there, um, 
the last time Danny and Kerthing started is actually. Um, but it was like, oh, maybe it was Marcus, I think, starting. But it was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be awesome and this and that. And they just kicked the leather off. And it was rubbish. And the crowd properly got on their backs. And that could be... That could be a factor. I, th- I think as as you know, English fans need to go there and, and get behind their boys and, and try not to be like the guy behind me the last time. Why are you kicking it? Every two minutes, just let them play. Let them play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, talking about uh, Twickenham atmosphere, the last really amazing Twickenham atmosphere was the last time Ireland played there in the Six Nations when Charlie Yours got sent off in like the second minute or something. And England just competed so hard and the crowd would just loved it because of the underdog, really. You know, they were screaming for the underdog, you know, going up against it. At that time as well, Ireland was the stronger team. And to sort of stick in the game for as long as they did with 14 players, just got that crowd absolutely on their feet. Yeah, and and and, and it, it shouldn't take a sending off, right? It, 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 what the crowd, I was at that game and the, the, the crowd... It was they could see the effort, and they could you know that, and that's all that's all, all you know they want to see. They want to see guys caring and, and giving it some. Um, and and sometimes it, the, the impression is because you know the the outside backs don't touch the ball for twenty five minutes that, that they you know there's no effort. That, that, that's the game plan. So yeah, me, me, maybe this you know go back to maybe the selection is kind of half. Um, Fan base. Wait, we should move to uh, where the where the teams get selected by social media. That'd be great fun. <laughs> Me and you be playing <laughs> right then. People at home after that ridiculous suggestion from Elko. What do you think? <laughs> do you think? Do you think the teams are correct? Um, do you think, uh, as we do, that Ireland are strong favourites and deservedly so? It's not arrogance. It's just deserved confidence. Are there anything tactically that you think we've missed that might play a key role? Any key matchups that you think will really decide the outcome of this game? We'd love to hear you from you in the comments down below, and we'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. Uh, it just leaves me to say, Elko, thanks so much again for your time today and valuable insight. Thanks, CT. Um, let's ho- let's hope it's a, a cracking game and, and the crowd uh, get entertained on both both sides of the. Of the coin. Hundred percent. People at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.